Adam, thank you so much for joining us on Fox Business today. So I'm really excited about this new survey that Amazon Web Services has now invested around $108 billion in infrastructure in the U.S. over the past decade. I just wanted to get a gauge on the health of the U.S. economy with those numbers and just what you're seeing right now globally, especially in high interest rate. Sure. Well, as you mentioned, we're really excited today to have released uh, this economic impact study uh, showing that AWS has invested $108 billion in the U.S. in cloud infrastructure uh, in local communities around the country. Um, it's actually produced almost $38 billion of incremental GDP in the country, um, has supported a, an estimated annual 30,000 jobs in local communities, from electricians to plumbers to bakers to uh, security folks. Um, and uh, we're really pleased to be able to help uh, bring that additional activity to be part of our local communities. And it's a big part of what we do. I uh, in terms of your, your question about the economy, uh, you know, we, we're, we're very bullish on uh, long-term growth of AWS and, and of the cloud. Um, obviously, there have been uncertainties and economic headwinds uh, blowing. And we do see a lot of our customers wanting to optimize their costs, get really efficient. And we love that. Uh, AWS has always, unlike most technology companies, wanted our customers to be efficient and to spend as little as possible, not as much as possible. And so we've dug in and worked with a lot of our customers to save them you know, many, many millions of dollars, folks like Airbnb, uh, Toyota North America, Johnson & Johnson. At the same time, we see many of our customers still continuing to invest and leaning into the innovation that the cloud enables. Yeah. Well, Adam, you know, in the recent earnings report this summer, AWS said that they're growing at 12% on the revenue side. You know, we could see improvements throughout the next quarter. I'm just wondering where we're tracking right now. I think it's pretty much as we reported before that uh, a lot of companies have been going through these cost optimization exercises. I think long term that's good for them. and I think long term that's good for AWS. We'll build trusted relationships, helping these companies to be as efficient as possible. Uh, we do see a lot of those companies uh, uh, starting to, uh, I think, near the tail end of those cost optimizations. Others are still right in the middle of it, of course. But we see a, a lot of innovation coming, uh, whether it's generative AI, uh, whether it's the uh, building a data platform on AWS, uh, many, many other uh, other areas. So uh, I think we're, we feel very optimistic about our future growth. So just being very clear here to our audience, but uh, you imagine that AWS and sales will be growing at this at this top line rate of 12 percent plus. I don't think we've uh, given any forward looking forecast. I, I think that uh, you know, we, 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 we certainly anticipate, you know, good, robust growth in quarters and years to come. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think long term, the potential of AWS is uh, uh, you know, probably significantly more than that in terms of growth. Uh, you know, we anticipate a lot of sources of growth coming in, but you know, it's a little hard to put, uh, put, put timing uh, around that. Yeah, I, I also want to talk about antitrust, given the recent FTC filing along with 17 states alleging that Amazon basically practices an illegal monopoly for online retail. I know AWS, of course, largest profit contributor to the bottom line there for Amazon. Just so just what your sense is of this uh, this tightening oversight and regulation from D.C.? Oh, sure. Uh, just to be clear, to, uh, to clarify, AWS is, is not part of that uh, FTC yep. action, uh, but obviously, you know, other parts of Amazon uh, are. I mean, we just frankly, flat out uh, disagree with the uh, with the FTC. Uh, we think uh, the allegations are wrong on the law. We also think they're wrong on the facts. But we look forward to, um, you know, having our day and uh, being able to make our case. We're very confident as to the uh, the benefit we've produced. The uh, the lower uh, the the lower prices, the uh, massive selection, and the faster shipping speeds that we've been able to bring to uh, consumers uh, in the U.S. and around the world, and I think we're justifiably very proud of that. 
Yeah, well, you're speaking to us at your new headquarters in Virginia, not far away from Washington, D.C. But, you know, it's not just Amazon that's been caught in the crosshairs of D.C. regulation and oversight. Also, you have an ongoing case right now with Google. So just being a veteran that has worked in technology for many, many years, you know, how do you feel about this uh, anti-big tech sentiment that seems to be percolating across the nation's capital? Well, I, I think that again, we, we just remain customer focused. We talk about being customer obsessed at Amazon. Amazon takes an unusually long term view of the world. Um, I think you, you see a lot of uh, there's always going to be a, a crosswind blowing uh, of one kind or another. And I think we just focus on innovating on behalf of our customers in every one of the segments in which we in which we operate. And I think if we do that and we just uh, keep on adding value to our customers that uh, they will see that it'll be easy for other people to observe that. Uh, you look at the economic impact of, of, of AWS in the United States with the $108 billion of, uh, of spend over, uh, from 2011 to 2022. Uh, you look at the price, the selection, the shipping speeds that Amazon retails brought. Uh, you look at the uh, incredible businesses and innovation that's been created for sellers, other businesses selling on Amazon.com. Uh, you look at the devices, you look at uh, the satellites that Amazon just put up into space this week our first prototype satellites for our uh, project Kuiper. We're innovating across a broad number of areas. And I think if we keep focusing uh, on that, you know, we believe that uh, uh, that value, if it's there, will be recognized. Yeah, well, recently you participated in the artificial intelligence AI roundtable with the White House. So I'm just wondering about generative AI and that $4 billion investment in Anthropic. You know, some people are, are wary of the future of AI. You've heard Elon Musk, I'm sure, in that roundtable discuss it. So wh where do you stand on the future with artificial intelligence? Is it good for humanity or should we be concerned? Well, uh, we do think that generative AI is a, a, a fundamental and uh, breakthrough set of technologies. Uh, uh, we do think that pretty much most applications that either businesses or you know, we as consumers uh, interact with are going to be fundamentally reshaped over time. Uh, it, it is an incredibly powerful set of technologies. And uh, I think it's going to be used for tremendous good. I think the innovation, the value uh, that are going to be unlocked are going to be amazing. The innovation is, is going to be uh, so incredible. Uh, like any powerful technology, obviously, there's also the potential for misuse. And I do think that uh, we collectively, industry, academia, policymakers, uh, need to think appropriately about uh, not stifling innovation, making sure we can keep on pressing ahead really quickly on behalf of customers around the world, and yet also having uh, policies and regulatory frameworks that appropriately balance risk. And in areas, whether it be public safety, health, national security matters, uh, that there are appropriate guardrails and regulatory frameworks put in place. So I, I think that uh, the potential for positive innovation is absolutely huge. I think we need to make sure that happens. And I think we need to really focus on responsible AI. Yeah, and what does that mean for these uh, generative AI models? Like uh, you just recently invested $4 billion to compete with OpenAI's chat GBT. You know, some people say that that's a little too little too late at this point. Uh, Amazon has been investing in AI since 1998 when we personalized the Amazon website. Uh, AWS has over 100,000 machine learning and AI customers. Uh, we've had large language models in production in Amazon for a long time now, powering things like Alexa voice responses, as well as parts of our retail uh, web search experience. And so uh, we've, we've been at this a long time. We're obviously now uh, uh, pointing a bunch of those resources towards generative AI in particular. Uh, we're taking, a, I think, a unique and differentiated approach. We're going all the way down to the silicon, designing our own chips for machine yeah. learning and AI. We uh, are uh, big believers in, in, in choice and democratization and flexibility by providing access uh, in a really secure fashion to uh, the best, most important models in the world so the customers can experiment. There will not be one model to rule them all. It'd be like asking back in the late 90s, who is the internet company going to be? It's just a nonsensical question. And our customers need to experiment. They need the flexibility. They need to figure out which models work best you know, for, for which use cases. And we're seeing all sorts of you know, incredible uh, organizations and companies working with AWS on AI from uh, Travelers Insurance to uh, BMW 
uh, to uh, uh, Lonely Planet, many, 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 many others. And it, it's just the dawn, but we're seeing huge interest in our approach and our capabilities that we're rapidly building uh, for generative AI. Yeah. And uh, we're very confident that we're going to have a great, great set of offerings for our customers for many years to come. Well, you touched on AI chips, and a lot of people complain, including Elon Musk, that it, you know Tesla, <laughs> Amazon, other big technology companies, You there's so much demand that you can't get access to the supply of, say, NVIDIA chips. So you're going out to make your own in Tranium, in Inferentia. So I, I'm just wondering, is this kind of like the Amazon Web Services model, where you pioneered innovation because you, you there wasn't enough supply out there? And will this actually work in this type of environment? Well, again, well, I think we're very consistent in so much of what we do is about choice and democratization. AWS was founded to democratize IT. We wanted anybody to have access to the same powerful compute and infrastructure resources that the largest enterprises have. And the same is true here about choice in this case. So we have a great relationship with NVIDIA. Uh, we're a very large GPU uh, uh, hoster, which includes, uh, obviously, that's the NVIDIA technology. And uh, and we're the, the best place on Earth from a performance perspective to host uh, to host GPUs. Yeah. And it is true that uh, uh, there's a, a huge demand for uh, chips to do uh, AI and ML workloads now. We think it's very important and very, very beneficial for our customers to have a choice as well as that. We've been investing for years, for almost a decade, and our own custom uh, silicon design. And uh, we've got general purpose chips. And here in this case, as you mentioned, we have Tranium and Inferentia, which are specific machine learning and AI chips. We think it's really valuable for our customers to have access to that supply. We think there's valuable for there to be multiple supply chains uh, yep. in the world for AI technology. And uh, uh, we think that's beneficial for everybody to take that uh, that very broad democratic approach. And just one more question for you, Adam, since uh, we are close to DC for, for Amazon Web Services today. What message do you have for politicians like Bernie Sanders, who says that Amazon does not contribute enough to government coffers and taxes? Uh, well, we disagree very strongly with Senator Sanders' uh, characterization. Uh, we've already talked about the uh, $108 billion that we've spent in the U.S. on uh, cloud computing infrastructure that's produced uh, almost $38 billion of incremental GDP. Uh, that's supported almost 30,000 jobs. Uh, that's supported uh, $25 billion in wages paid in those jobs. In addition, we're very active in our local communities. Uh, we have uh, uh, programs for uh, 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 girls who code. Uh, in 2022 alone, that reached 13,000 uh, girls. Uh, we have uh, many local community programs. We have the uh, AWS uh, Academy, where we provide uh, free curriculum to over 500 colleges and universities in the U.S., uh, giving them free curriculum for, for cloud computing. Uh, we have local training programs in community colleges, where we're training electricians and uh, other skills needed in data center uh, building, maintenance, and operations. And uh, we also are very environmentally conscious in our local communities. If you take our data center uh, facilities in, in uh, Oregon, for example, 96% uh, of the water that we use for cooling, we give back to local farmers for irrigation free of charge. And that's the kind of um, you know, reuse and recycling and being part of the local communities that we believe in. So we're, we, we really believe that our success and our scale create broad responsibility for us, and we're trying mm -hmm. to live that. Adam, thank you so much for your time. Great to see you. Thank you so much.